to Mississauga Creates. I'm your host, Angela Chow, and weekly I will be interviewing local creatives, showcasing the amazing talent in my hometown, Mississauga. Today we are joined by award-winning artist, Laura Beaton. Hi, Laura. Good morning. How are you? Good, good. So tell me a little bit about yourself. I want to learn a bit more. Well, I'm, I'm a Toronto-born visual artist. I moved to Mississauga well over 30 years ago, raised a family, co-founded a consulting business. I also had a faux finishing business in the 90s. Uh, that was where I did marbling, various types of stone finishes on walls, wood, paneling, etc. And that's also where I started my art career and I've ultimately become a visual fine artist. Uh, recognized by uh, Mississauga Arts Council where I was fortunate enough to win a Marty's for established visual fine artist. And my art is, it's in permanent and private collections in Canada, the United States, China, and that includes uh, by the Chinese government, as well as in personal and private collections in China, as well as in Africa by His Royal Highness Edward Wambuzi Columbus. So right now I, I'm just on an upward path and it's all thanks to, I think, my life experience in Mississauga. How long have you been an artist and when did you get started? I've been an artist since, well, I've always been creative. Um, but I officially, I guess, started my art process in 2007 when I started studying Chinese brush painting. Why do you create and what is your creative process? I create for a number of reasons. When I was a, a youth, I was diagnosed with a rare disease. That's ultimately led to 10 major surgeries so far in my lifetime. And in order to manage the pain, manage my sanity, quite frankly, and to establish an outlet, I started studying art. It was really, really important. As a, as a child, my family used to take us to downtown Toronto, to Chinatown, and I was just enthralled with the colors, the reds, the blues, the golds, the yellows, everything that it entailed. I was fascinated, loved the food, um, and it just snowballed from there. In 2007, as I said, when, when I started studying Chinese brush painting, it led ultimately to earning my seal, my chop, uh, through the Sumiai Artists of Canada in 2012. Uh, from there, it expanded. I ultimately got invited to exhibit in a number of cities in China in 2018. And throughout all of that, I've broadened it to include my scarf. I, I've had some of my art transferred to a, a scarf just because why not, right? It's creative and I wanted to try it. Laura, what is your inspiration and who are your influences? My inspiration truly are the people that I've met along my journey, be it my life journey, my art journey, my journey as a, as, as a wife, a mother, etc. The best way to describe it is I like to build in layers because life doesn't just happen all at once, although it may seem that way. There are layers to what happens. There's a process to what happens in life. And that's how I manage my art. I love to cook. And the best analogy I can describe is I go into a grocery store and I can be inspired by one simple ingredient. And it's usually a spice, an herb, or a piece of produce. And what I do when I cook, I build in layers. I'm always building up the flavor. And so when I look to my canvas, I'm building up the flavor of the art. I'm trying to be as authentic as I can and as I've discovered, life doesn't happen just immediately for me. There is a process. And so I build layers through my art and it's as authentic as I can be. As for my influencers, I'm musically inclined. I taught organ music when I started that when I was 15. I could recite a lot of musical influencers and, and why they're important to me is because I learned at a very young age through music, the best balance in music is silence and sound. As with art, it's space and ink or paint. You have to have a balance. So my influencers, although I could mention so many famous people, have actually been the fellow artists I've met through the Mississauga Arts Council, through Arts on the Credit, 
I find this is how the artists are willing to share. They're willing to share their expertise, gracious in their knowledge. And I find just living up to that has really been a tremendous influence to me as an artist. How do you feel before you create and how do you feel after you create? When it comes to Chinese brush painting in particular, I feel anticipation. I can feel a tremendous amount of stress because I find it a very stressful art process, art technique. And by that, I mean, you can ruin the painting and without going into the, the intricacies of the process, you can ruin a painting at any given time. So I have spent literally 16 over 20 hours on a painting to have it ruined for various reasons. One of the key reasons though has been I finished a painting and through Chinese brush painting, you have to have it mounted. And by that I mean, and my preference of mounting their different methods is a wet mount. And that's a 27 step process. So the painting can be ruined through no fault of my own through that process. And the people that do the mounting, they are considered artists under themselves. I've had major paintings, huge paintings ruined through no fault of my own. When it comes to mixed media, you paint over it if it's a mistake, it's not a big deal. There, there's a mixture of emotions when I paint. How has being in self-isolation affected the way you create? Well, with the Chinese brush painting and the mounting issue, I'm obviously not able to get my artworks through to an individual to do the mounting. I, what I've done is I have had images of my Chinese works printed onto acrylic prints and I do have a sample here and this is an example of one and what I do is I find at least this way I can get some sort of a finished product with my Chinese brush painting. With my mixed media the issue is getting the canvases, having enough paints, I'm one of those people, I like to physically go into a store and root around and get a feel. And sometimes I can be inspired by the size of a canvas. I try to look at the positives. What has helped you get through this pandemic? Being creative in every aspect of my life. Taking my knowledge of art and the process of creativity, creating pieces that lean toward the positive. I can start negative, I can create a piece that's very negative, and then I'll look at it, I'll walk away, I'll come back and think, ooh, that just won't do. How can I make that negative piece become positive? And, and that's basically what I try to do. How can art help mental well-being? It can help work through a myriad of emotions. Art is wonderful. It's, it's wonderfully subjective. And the beauty of it is I can create anything I want to reflect any emotion, negative, positive, and everything in between. And I don't have to show it to anybody. It's mine. It's completely personal. And it's safe. It provides a safe medium and avenue and outlet for any and all emotions. What are you creating while in self-isolation? So I've always believed if I don't look after my own body, mental state, well-being, etc., then I'm not in a position to help anybody else. I'm not in a position to help my family, support them, support my friends. So I do eat healthy, I look after myself, exercise, and therefore I have remained healthy. I'm able to look after my family. I make sure that I'm the only person that, if I have to go get groceries, I'm the only one that does, comes back in, we have a routine set up. I try to have as many groceries delivered as possible. When that happens, everything goes back into the garage where we have a cleaning station set up. I feel like I'm in the military <laughs> in some respects, quite regimented. Um, and I just uh, stay home. I have all prescriptions delivered. I'm just being, trying to be smart about it. What are some tips you would give to people? I'd say stay home, be safe, and be smart. Be smart about what you do. Where can we find you online? My website is laurabeaton.com. Facebook is Laura Beaton. Instagram is Laura A. Beaton Art. Bye, Laura. Thank you for joining me. Bye, Angela. If you enjoyed that video with Mississauga Creates, make sure you subscribe. Tune in every week where I will be interviewing local creatives, showcasing the amazing talent in my hometown, Mississauga. Please subscribe and enjoy my next video. See you next time.